Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. Well, welcome everyone to another episode of On Finding Peace. I'm your host, Chris Shea, and this is the podcast where we talk about practical tips that we all can do on a daily basis, which can lead us to finding our inner peace. I know that inner peace is possible. I've been without it. I've found ways to get it. And on this podcast, we talk about ways that we can find it and keep it on a daily basis. And how can we find and keep this inner peace on a daily basis? Well, on today's show, we're going to be talking about some of the reasons why mindfulness matters in our lives. And on today's episode, we don't have a guest with us. So it is going to be myself sharing some of my personal story and talking a bit about what these reasons are uh, that I have found for my life as to why mindfulness matters. And for those of you who are familiar with my work, either on the podcast or my uh, speaking or my writing, my publishing I'm constantly talking about mindfulness and what it is and how we can use it on a daily basis. But I figured for this episode, we might want to talk a bit about not necessarily what mindfulness exactly is, but why it matters. Why would I even talk about it? Why would I encourage all of you to learn about it? And most importantly, why would I ask all of you uh, to follow it on a daily basis? So to start out, if I were to ask you this question, what ultimately do you want from your life? What is the ultimate goal in life? I think for many of us, the first thing we would say is, well, I want to be happy. That becomes our goal in life. I want to be happy. For some of us, we would say that we want to have money, we want to have success, we want to have a a good family, a great job, we want to be known by others. What we tend to do is seek these answers from our own life, and one of the ways that we can find those answers is by looking at our society and our culture. For many of us in the Western world, our culture tells us that if you want to find happiness or success, if you want to feel really great about your life, then what you need to do is to get more stuff, gain fame, and then you're going to feel happy. If you get all lots and lots of followers on your social media, if you can produce a lot of likes, maybe your YouTube channel will become ultra famous and go viral and you'll get a TV show based off of your YouTube channel. Now, I'm not saying that's necessarily bad. And if anybody out there wants to promote my YouTube channel and make it go viral and give me a TV show, I'm not going to say no. But... That in and of itself is not the happiness that I'm talking about. Because ultimately, the answers of having more stuff or money or fame, that's really not going to suffice as an answer to this question. Is this really what we want, that fame or that money? Or is there something deeper for which we long? During my time as a counselor, and I've been doing this for a couple decades now, I've worked with clients who come from every socioeconomic status. I've worked uh, in the inner city, 
uh, of various cities along the East Coast, um, most recently in Baltimore. So I've worked with the clients who have absolutely nothing. And I've had clients who are homeless, who are living out on the streets, all the way to working in agencies and working now in my private practice where people do have uh, material resources, where they have some money, or they've been rich. They've been politicians, CEOs, and the like. So I've dealt with this question along that spectrum of people who have absolutely, and I mean nothing, all the way to the people who supposedly have it all. What was common amongst all people from that spectrum? All of them had issues. Many of their issues were the same. But ultimately, they were all seeking the answer to what is my life all about. And what I begin to find is people who have struggled in their life they come to understand that part of that answer to what is the point of my life is coming up with a deep feeling of peace. And it seems to me that as a result of their life struggles, they're coming to a realization that material goods and wealth and fame is fleeting. And if it's fleeting, then it can be lost. And they know this from experience. For those who had a simple life that eventually they lost much, if not all of it, to even those who had fame and fortune, and they're sitting in my office with less of that. They're all looking for the same thing and coming to the realization that if I focus my life on seeking what society is telling me to seek that is fleeting and it can be lost. They're no longer finding their life satisfaction in the material goods. And I think one of the reasons that people come to me or ask me to speak is because what makes me different from many other life coaches is that I am not promising you your dreams. I am not promising to you that everything that you want out of life, I will give it to you. I'm not getting up on stage and saying, you know what, I have this fail-safe, perfect message and routine that says, if you do this, you are going to have tons and tons of money, and you will be famous and successful and therefore live life. That's not what I'm promising. My work as a life coach is in leading you to find your inner peace. And in finding that inner peace, it results in a self-love which is expressed through action. My goal is not to make you successful, rich, or famous. And actually, and take this as truth, actually, I don't care if you succeed or fail in aspects of your life. Because many of us are going to succeed in some things that we do, and many of us are going to also fail in some things that we do. We are all going to make mistakes in our life. We are all going to have times when life does not go right. And sometimes when life doesn't go right, it's as a direct result of my actions. But I really don't care. That's not my point as a life coach to see you succeed or to see you fail, because my goal is to lead you to finding inner peace. And in that goal of finding inner peace, we can feel that peace within ourselves despite what is happening in life. Because the key to all of this is found in our priorities and in our perception. So it really doesn't do me any good if I help you find full success in life, if I help you find riches or fame, 
those in and of themselves, as my clients have taught me, are not going to bring us peace because those things are fleeting and those things can be lost. But if my focus as a life coach is to help you to find inner peace, that sense of inner peace can stay with us even if I'm successful and even if I'm not as successful. Even when things in life are not going right, I can still feel peace within myself. This is why I focus on helping us to find inner peace and not the material goods. The way that we can find our peace is through the daily practice of mindfulness. Now, why does mindfulness matter? Well, for me, a bit over five years ago, I had made a significant uh, job change. And the job change was going from a corporate world with all of its stressors and anxieties and, uh, you know, drives to be the best into moving into a very rural area and working in a high school. And I did this by choice. This was part of my life change of moving away from the city life, away from all of that hustle and bustle of of that corporate world and making that change. And, And I did that on purpose. But one of the things that this change had forced me to do was to slow down. Me being a type A person who wants to be involved in everything that can possibly get involved in, to be busy at all times, I was now forced into slowing down. And the main reason for that? School doesn't go in session in the summer. I had not for the past 20-some years had an entire summer off. And since my school years, since my degrees, I have always worked a job where you work year-round. I did not have that luxury of a couple months off. So for me, going in the last uh, couple decades of working and working and working, and to now being told, hey, you've got a couple months off and free, at first, I really thought, hey, this, this is actually a great thing. You're, you're giving me multiple months of vacation. Awesome. Great. But about after the first week, maybe the first two weeks, that's when things started to change inside of me. And that change was because now I started to notice within myself, I don't have anything to do. Now, granted, there's always something to do, but that's not the point. After about those two weeks that would have been a typical vacation time for me prior to returning to work, I now realize that I still have more time off. And what was I going to do with this free time? Because in my mind, I already did what I wanted to do. I read some books. I did a little bit of writing. I did some relaxing. I did the things that I thought would rejuvenate me for those two weeks. Now what? And at the time for all of this, I wasn't yet consciously aware that I was beginning to live mindfully. But as I slowed myself internally and externally, I began to focus my thoughts and my intention, my attentions on the present moment. I was no longer dwelling on my past nor anxious about my future. And for me, this was quite the challenge. Because for me, I was the king of anxiety and worry. I was always planning for the future. I was always worried about what was happening in the, or had happened in the past and how that was influencing the future. My life was a constant back and forth between the past and the future, skipping that present moment. I know I'm not the only one who has done and who does do that. 
But that's what I began to learn. That if I could refocus my attention on the present moment, I not only reduced my anxiety and my worry, but I also found a purpose. And that's what I began to notice that when I had all of this time off, I didn't really see in my life a purpose because I didn't have that job. But what I began to realize is that there is a deeper purpose. And it's in this depth that I began to use uh, the rest of, of my summer. And during that time in the summer is when I discovered uh, the work of John Kabat-Zinn, as well as many other people who write about mindfulness, and many other uh, spiritual works within my realm of Christianity and Catholicism. But one of the things that struck me is uh, John Kabat-Zinn's definition of what mindfulness is. And he wrote, that mindfulness is a means of paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment, and non-judgmentally. Now, for me, the key phrases of his definition is the sections of on purpose and non-judgmentally. Because what I began to learn is that to find inner peace, we need to consciously make the choice to spend every day focusing our intentions on what is happening around and within us. Our focus is not meant to judge what's happening or to judge what I'm feeling. The focus is simply to notice and to experience As I became more aware of my surroundings and of my inner self, I became more aware of the joys in my life, the difficulties. I saw potential. And most importantly for me, I found in me a sense of hope. For me, it was in this state of focused awareness that I had enabled myself to discover solutions. For me, this is why mindfulness matters. This is what I'm trying to get across to the people who are listening to me and reading uh, you know, what I put down. Because for me, in the past five years or so, there's been a significant uh, change in me, but not just a significant change in me where I don't worry as much and I stay focused on the present. But in these past five years or so, the more that I research and study about mindfulness, I'm beginning to see that the scientific world is also picking up on mindfulness. No longer is mindfulness just a Eastern tradition or something that uh, Buddhists do or people who follow the New Age stuff do. But science is looking at mindfulness and meditation and beginning to realize that actually, scientifically, this works. There's been studies conducted by many reputable organizations. One famous one uh, a couple years ago from Harvard, which looks at the effectiveness of mindfulness and meditation where it states that meditation not only makes us feel better, but meditation can actually physically heal the body. What this Harvard study concluded is that not only are there physical changes in the body that can help people coping with some health issues, but that meditation, which is a foundation for mindfulness, can actually grow gray matter in our brain. And if we can grow gray matter in the brain, that means that our brain is growing and has a greater potential for further insight and knowledge and memory. 
So mindfulness is not simply a nice thing that we can do. Science is showing us that mindfulness is actually healing. So mindfulness does matter because it's a means, it's a way of finding inner peace. Instead of seeking mere satisfaction out of life, we can now seek peace. Peace is not a fleeting emotion. Peace is a state of mind and of being. Being at peace does not come and go as situations change. Peace is the constant through which we view and react to our situations. For example, when you think about this, I can feel sad, but yet still remain in a state of peace. But I can't feel both happy and sad at the same time. See, happiness and feeling sad are the direct opposites of each other. I can't be happy and be sad at the same time. But I also know that those times that are the happiest for me come and go. I don't live my life in a constant state of feeling happy. Which also says that I don't have to live in a constant state of sadness. But I can live in a constant state of peace. And in this peace, what we find is a union within ourselves of who I am with what I do. The actions that I do in my life are in sync with what I believe and what I feel. If you want to learn more about that, search through my website because I've done a couple uh, article posts on looking at that key topic. You know, what what does it mean to be uh, finding inner peace? So uh, just scroll to the bottom of my website and you'll see a search uh, bar there and just search for uh, inner peace and all the stuff I've written about will pop up there. So what I look at then is striving for peace ultimately leads us deeper into ourselves. Now, of course, many people don't want to look at ourselves, and myself included, because there might be things about ourselves we don't really like. But that's a topic for another podcast or article, so stay tuned on that. But suffice it to say, the more that I look at myself in the present moment and experience what I'm experiencing in the present moment, I am then going to lead myself deeper into this sense of peace because I'm learning more about myself and getting more in sync with my being and my feelings and my actions. Now, the belief that we don't have control over our lives, that belief leads us away from inner peace. The more that I feel out of control in my life, the greater I will feel anxiety. But when we understand and actually believe that we do have control over our thoughts and feelings, then we can admit that we do have some control over our life. And since we have control, we're no longer helpless. The difference being that we may not have control over the situations that we encounter, but we always have control over how we respond to those situations. So refocusing our perception, not on controlling a situation that I have no control over, but instead controlling my response, whether that's in my feelings, in my thoughts, in my actions, learning to control those and responding in that way, that is going to lead us Uh, more so into our peace, because we recognize that we have control. 
how I perceive the situation, what action I take, influences how deeply my inner peace is rooted. As I personally continue to learn about and to experience mindfulness, I have come up with some reasons why mindfulness matters to me. Mindfulness keeps us focused in the present moment, the here and now. And why is this important? Because we have no control over the past or the future. So we feel anxious. But we do have control over how we respond to the present. And in keeping our thoughts on the present is empowering. It's empowering because I can actually do something about my present uh, condition or situation. Another reason why it's important is that mindfulness changes my perception on learned helplessness. For many of us, if we've suffered from any type of trauma, we tend to tell ourselves that we are now and always will be helpless to avoid the negative impacts in our life. Our perception is now revolved around the negativity. But if we work on what I just mentioned, we can change those thoughts from thoughts of being helpless to thoughts of solutions. Keep in mind that anything we've learned in our past can be unlearned or learned differently. So just because I think in a particular way or I react in a particular manner doesn't mean I always have to do so. We can make those changes if we change that perception and keep our focus on the present moment. Another reason for me is that mindfulness keeps us from getting discouraged. We become discouraged when our expectations aren't met. But a question that we need to ask ourselves is, was the expectation reasonable? Did we have control over that outcome? Now, in mindfulness, by focusing on the present, it helps us to keep our expectations reasonable. And as I just mentioned, is going to allow us to understand that there are things in our control and things not in our control. So when we look at what is our expectation, we need to keep in mind those two things, that it has to be a reasonable expectation and that we do have control over certain things within our life. And one of the most important things for me about mindfulness is that it can help us to change our perspective. And for me, this is an essential reason why mindfulness matters. Because perspective is the way that we view the world and so respond to the world. But sometimes our perception on the world is skewed because of some of our past traumas, unpleasant situations, our past hurts, any of the negativity that we've gone through in our life, that is going to skew how we perceive the world around us because we're always looking at the world around us through the filter of our past. But if we can use mindful meditation to refocus ourselves onto the present and on how we feel in the present, we can then refocus our perspective. And once our perspective is refocused, we can respond to situations in a more healthy manner. And one of the last things I wanted to mention about mindfulness and why it matters is that mindfulness can calm our anxiety. If we can work on the aspects of why mindfulness matters that I've just outlined, the natural result, or we could say the natural consequence of those actions, is a reduction in anxiety. Because by focusing on the present moment, 
we can then understand what is and what is not in our control. And that allows us to no longer feel helpless. And when we don't feel helpless, we have now changed our perspective. As I mentioned, once I change my perspective, I can now cope with, deal with, respond to the situations in my life in a much healthier manner. So for me, mindfulness matters because it helps us to get to know ourselves on a daily basis. And I personally know from experience the change that mindfulness can have on a person because I've been there. I've made those changes. These aren't words that I speak or things that I've just come up with so that I can say, oh, look, I do mindfulness. No, I actually work on this stuff. I actually try on a daily basis to do my best in changing that perception and focusing on the present moment. I may not do it all the time perfectly, but I've never said anywhere in this talk or in any of my articles have I ever said that we need to do any of this perfectly. What I would suggest if you want to start working on your mindfulness is to start slowly. Maybe every day try to meditate for just 10 minutes. Every day, try to refocus your thoughts on the present moment. And then over time, slowly increase the time of your meditation and increase your knowledge and understanding of mindfulness as time progresses. But ultimately, do something that makes a difference in your life that leads you toward that peace. Work on it daily. We're not looking for perfection, but what we are looking for is the effort that you're making in trying to make that difference. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode. And I hope that the message in this episode has inspired you and given you some of the tools that you need to find peace in your life. If you have found those tools and you found this to be inspiring and you know of others who also need these tools, please share this podcast with them. Let them know of the opportunities out there that they too can find their inner peace. Thank you very much for the sharing. Thank you for listening. And have a very mindful day. Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.